This video reviews the AP Biomaterial on carbohydrates and lipids. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com. If you're studying for the AP Bio exam, you do not have to do this alone. On learn-biology.com, we've got quizzes, flashcards, interactive diagrams, FRQs to support you in studying for the AP Bio exam. This material is so effective that if you complete our program, we guarantee you a four or a five. Don't delay, sign up for a free trial today. So what are the four types of macromolecules that make up living organisms? What can you identify from this diagram? So what you have here are carbohydrates represented by this disaccharide over here. We have a lipid represented by a phospholipid, a key molecule membrane. We have a protein represented by hemoglobin and a nucleic acid represented by DNA. So those are the big four. What do you need to know about carbohydrates? So um, carbohydrates, the monomer of carbohydrates are monosaccharides. Those are simple sugars, and some of those are all important in biology, like for example, glucose, which is essentially the fuel of life. Disaccharides are gonna show up less in the course, but you might have a question that's about lactose and lactose intolerance. Well really doesn't make sense unless you know that lactose is a disaccharide composed of two linked monosaccharides. And then you have polysaccharides, molecules that are used for energy storage like starch, which is in plants, glycogen, which is in you and other animals, and then um, polysaccharides that play important structural roles like cellulose, which makes up the cell walls of plants. While humans and other animals can't digest cellulose for food energy, a few animals such as ruminants and termites can explain. Most animals can't hydrolyze the bonds that connect glucose monomers and cellulose. So here's cellulose, it's a polysaccharide, it's a bunch of linked glucoses, but it's linked in a way so that you don't have the enzymes that can break this bond, freeing up the glucose monomers. So essentially, you could eat lettuce, celery, these are high cellulose foods all day. You'd never get enough calories to really power your life processes. You do have the enzymes that can break this bond in starch. So over here and over here and over here, and that enables you to convert starch into glucose, and that enables you to use that glucose to power cellular respiration. There are a couple of animals such as termites and ruminants. Ruminants include uh, cows, sheep, goats, deer, other animals, other mammals. And what they did is they involved symbiotic relationships with microorganisms that can hydrolyze this bond and thereby break this, oh, excuse me, break this bond over here, break this bond over here, break this bond over here. And that releases these glucose monomers making food energy available. Let's end our review of carbohydrates by looking at an issue in relatively recent human evolution related to carbohydrates. And that's about the biology of lactose tolerance and intolerance. So here's what you need to know. Lactose is the sugar in milk. Here it is, it's a disaccharide. Lactase is the enzyme that hydrolyzes lactose into monosaccharides. And here you see that reaction happening. Most mammals only produce lactase during infancy while they're suckling, because that's the only time that most mammals ever drink milk. So that makes sense from an evolutionary point of view, because uh, when you're an adult, you uh, don't produce lactase, it's an adaptation. Why should you produce an enzyme for something that you don't eat? But what happened in human evolution is that some human groups that were pastoralists, herders, these are people who um, were associated with cows and sheep and goats and so on and so forth, they had access to all these milk products from the cows and the sheep and the goats. And some of them developed a mutation that enabled them to continue to produce the lactase enzyme into adulthood. And that opened up a whole niche of food exploitation that wasn't otherwise available. Now this didn't happen all over the world. This happened in a couple of hotspots. Here's one in Africa, here's one in Europe, and here's one in uh, Saudi Arabia, current Saudi Arabia, and here's one that is in the Indian subcontinent. And in those areas, 
lactase persistence, production of lactase into adulthood became widespread. But in large areas of the world, that never happened. And there are many humans, the majority of humans, who are lactose intolerant as adults. But if that's true of you, as it is of me, then we have products like Lactate. Lactate is essentially lactase, the enzyme that you can use as an additive to food, and it'll break lactose down into lactose and uh, glucose. And you can buy Lactate milk and so on and so forth. And that's how that problem, if it's even a problem, is solved. Is AP Bio making you feel overwhelmed and inadequate? That's completely reasonable. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. The material is complex, the pace is brutal, and the vocabulary is ridiculous. But at learn-biology.com, we've created a way that makes it easier for you to study. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Now let's move on to lipids. Let's talk about lipids and what are their functions. So here we have four different lipids. And what makes a lipid a lipid? First of all, lipids are molecules that are wholly or partly nonpolar. So uh, for example, like you see all these hydrocarbons over here. Those are all completely nonpolar. They don't dissolve in water. They're hydrophobic. They also are characterized by the fact that unlike the carbohydrates that we've met and the proteins and the nucleic acids that we will meet, they're not composed of repeating monomers. They might have subunits, but they don't have those subunits repeated hundreds or dozens of times. So what are their functions? Well, over here, we have um, a fat, a triglyceride, and that's used for energy storage. That's true in both animals and plants. In animals, those fats are usually solid. In plants, those fats are usually liquid. We call them oils. Here's a wax. Waxes are used for waterproofing. This molecule is a phospholipid. It makes up cell membranes. We'll talk about that later. And then we have a steroid hormone like estrogen or testosterone that's used for signaling. So what's the relationship between phospholipid structure and membrane structure? Well, here's what you need to know. Phospholipids have a hydrophobic nonpolar tail. That's this over here. And they have a hydrophilic or polar head. And those two parts are connected by a molecule of glycerol. And the key thing is that when you mix this kind of molecule in water, they spontaneously form an orientation where the heads will interact with water and the tails will avoid water hydrophilic over here, hydrophobic over here. And so if you can think about that arranged in a kind of spherical way, you wind up having a structure that is a bilayer, two layers of phospholipids. And that's the structural framework of cell membranes. We'll talk much more about that when we do unit two. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.